Welcome to Dirt Sweat and Gears. We're here with my 1989 Honda Prelude and we're getting ready to go to a car show. Yes, that's right. I am taking my Prelude to the Radwood Car Show on November 20th down in Torrance at the Honda headquarters. Radwood not only features 80s and 90s cars, but they also expect you to dress like you're from the 80s or the 90s. And lucky for me, that just means putting on pants. Uh, because uh, I kind of look like I'm stuck in 1996. So that is a car show that I really couldn't say no to. And this is going to be the first car show that my Prelude will be a participant in. Usually my Prelude takes me to car shows so I can look at other cars. But for the first time ever, this car has actually entered in to be one of the cars in the show. I think that's pretty amazing. One of the reasons that's so appealing to me is really the number of miles I have on this car and just the life that I've lived with this car. And most cars you see in car shows are low mileage examples in pristine condition that have really just kind of sat in a garage and just admired or, or some collector uh, decided that this car would be an investment and someday this will be worth something. Uh, my car is heavily modified. My car is destroyed or ruined or molested or whatever term you want to throw at it, this car is not a pristine example. But I still think it looks pretty clean and um, I think the history that I have with this car, uh, I have personally put over 200,000 miles uh, in the 20 years that I've owned this car. I've driven it up and down the coast several times. Uh, I have lived a life with this car. And that is something that most collectors cannot say about their car. And that's why I believe that everyone should modify their car, make it unique to their personality. Now I'm not opposed to restoring a car to factory condition because that's still something that you took, that you put time and money and labor uh, and love into to bring something from uh, a really bad state you know, a forgotten state uh, to be a, a viable car that can be appreciated and admired. I have no problem with restoring crappy cars to factory condition. But if you just take something that rolled off the showroom and you stick it in your garage for 20, 30 years, what did you really do with this car? What did you really do with it? How did you really appreciate it? You just kind of sat and stared at it. You didn't do anything. And that's why I am so proud to show off this car because I've turned every bolt in this car, most of them more than once, because you got to put them back on. So technically, yeah. When you look at a car, like you have memories and I have a literal lifetime's worth of memories. My entire adult life, I've owned this thing. I've moved with this car. Every, all of my possessions, I took the seats out and I would move everything I owned only with this car, not a U-Haul. Uh, eventually, I would use a U-Haul for the big stuff. I've uh, spun out in the mountains. I've uh, set this car on fire. Uh, I've driven this car so hard that the body separated itself. And then I set it on fire, welding it back together. I've told you that story before. Uh, I converted this car to four-wheel steering. I've cut things. I've uh, drilled holes. I've uh, The wheels have fallen off. Uh, only one wheel, actually, and then it ruined the fender. So, so uh, I repainted the car. I have installed a carbon fiber hood. I've got coilovers, uh, white line suspensions, C pillar bar. I have custom made uh, strut tower bars. You know, this is this, my strut bars are made by a guy in his garage. Uh, sa same with uh, my exhaust. My exhaust was a one-off, a prototype made by LSD Motorsports. I've gotten speeding tickets. I've gotten tra uh, front plate tickets, uh, window tint tickets. Uh, every stupid thing a teenager could do with a car, I've done with this car and I still have it. And it still runs strong. So I am thrilled to take it to a car show. So let's not delay any further. First, I want to take you through some of the things that I need to do to prepare this car, some of the things that I've been wanting to uh, fix, uh, and this is the opportunity to do that. 
And obviously we're gonna clean the car once we're done with that. I, I'm gonna uh, clay bar it. Uh, I have a brand new clay in the mail, uh, I think arriving tomorrow. So really this is the time uh, to get these little things wrapped up. First thing that comes to the list is actually in the trunk. Uh, I've been meaning to clean up this wiring and if I'm going to go to a car show and open up my trunk, I cannot show this. So I'm going to do some uh, zip tie wizardry, but also the remote for my subwoofer amplifier is disconnected and hanging below the uh, deck there. So I have to retrieve it, pull it through, connect it, and then I can zip tie everything together, which means I'm going to have to take the subs out. I'm going to try to get away with... Uh, not having to remove the battery, but I'm not opposed to it. Uh, it, you know, I just want to try to get my arm under there and try to fish around and find it. And so I have to be careful when I'm doing that. I have to watch how far I lift this uh, because if the uh, terminals start getting close to the strut bar, that could um, that could lead to a bad time. So I just got to be aware of it. If I have to disconnect it, I will. It's not a big deal. I just uh, would rather not. And obviously I got to do some vacuuming and interior detailing. I've got pretty much everything I need to make that happen. I don't need to do a whole lot to the interior. I've got it pretty, pretty well tightened up. Uh, I, I really like being inside this car. So uh, obviously I just have to do some, some cleaning, uh, maybe fix that. Under the hood is also pretty clean, but it could use some uh, TLC just to wipe up the dirt. And, you know, I'll use some, uh, I'll use some uh, plastic rest restoration on the cowl. And then uh, underneath the hood, I'm going to try to clean up all those water spots. Uh, not that big of a deal. I'm just going to do, do what I can. If I get really ambitious, I'm going to keep an eye out for some spray paint and maybe respray that strut tower bar. But like I said, uh, this was made by a guy in his garage. I think that's kind of uh, a feather in my cap and not really something that uh, is a detriment to this car. It adds to the story. Uh, the intake, I just installed that. I just got to wipe it off the dust. Uh, same with every, really everything here. I might want to uh, wrap, rewrap the wires to uh, the alternator. Uh, put a new, uh, you know, wrapping on it. Uh, same with this down here. I might want to clean this up a little bit, make it a little bit nicer. Uh, what else? If I can take that piping off, the old pipe for the breather, uh, I will. If not, I'm not terribly worried about it. And again, I'm, I'm not at all worried about uh, the, the black paint on the valve cover. It just means that I use the car. It would be really nice if I could address that panel gap, but uh, I've tried a few times and uh, I just can't figure out what I need to do to fix this. I know I've got to shift things around. This is uh, an aftermarket bumper, so the bumper itself could be warped, uh, who knows. And of course there's paint imperfections, but I'm not gonna do anything about that. Uh, I'd like to repaint the car but obviously that's not going to happen in a few weeks. And then I got some paint damage here too. Uh, the wheels, I want to try to find center caps because I'm missing one and I would really like to replace them with Honda center caps. I think they'd be really cool. The curb rash doesn't bother me. These wheels were free. And also if I'm feeling saucy, I can try to tape this up, uh, mask this off and uh, repaint the bumper trim. I think that would make it look really nice. This here, I, eh, it's kind of dumb, but whatever. Okay, I see what happened. This got pulled by that. This runs to the front of the car, so I could probably just snip this zip tie. Won't really do any harm to just pull this out since this doesn't go to the capacitor. The blue one does. The blue one will stay charged, which really kind of sucks. So I'm just going to pull this one out. I'm going to clip this little zip tie here. I don't really need it. And I'm going to rerun 
that big thick wire that runs to the front of the car. Oh yeah. Yeah, that. That is pretty nice. That's pretty nice for a guy in his garage with a 30-year-old car that he's had most of his life. Uh, this was just a piece of wood that I cut, wrapped some carpet around it, and here we go. This, I'm satisfied. Now, like I said, it's not perfect, but it doesn't need to be. This car was daily driven for most of my life. More than half of my life. As not a bonus, I got my hat for the event. Fuck yeah. I had a hat just like this when I was a kid. I had to have watched Wayne's World 20, 30 times. I think I was very, very sick at that time. Uh, and I stayed home and just watched Wayne's World on repeat. So uh, that is... Uh, as a child of the 90s, that is a quintessential movie, especially if you're into rock and roll. I took it outside for a wash, and all I did was wash it and dry it. Uh, when I wash my car, I typically uh, will go park under the tree, get as much shade as I can, and for anything that I don't get shade, I just want to try to keep that section wet uh, until I'm ready to dry it. And this uh, prevents water spots as, at least as best I can. I wasn't terribly worried about it because I am going to be claying the car. Uh, and you see, it just came out really nice. And that's because I had a coat of wax on it from before and I never really got it that dirty. Uh, since I'm prepping for a show, I am kind of going overboard. And we'll go outside once I'm done clay barring the car and waxing it for kind of like a final photo shoot. This is just the next step. So when I wash a car, again, I'll start from the top and I'll do it in sections, uh, starting from the top. So I'll, um, you know, just lightly spray it, soap it, rinse off the soap, and then move on to a next section, whatever's manageable. And for this car, it's the top, and then I'll do the rear glass, and then I'll do the sides, the rear, just the hood, and then the fenders in front bumper, you know, and then I'll just move around the car until uh, I've got it um, soaked and then rinsed. And, uh, you know, and if it's really hot out, I'll dry it in sections as well. I'll just go ahead and dry the top once I'm done with the uh, glass uh, on the front, rear, and sides. Then I'll just go ahead and start drying, and then I'll only do the bottom down here. Uh, when it's really hot, it's a real challenge, but uh, today it wasn't very hot, and I got most of the car shaded, so I was able to do a really nice job. Next up is the clay bar. For claying this car, I'm going to be using Clay Magic. Uh, this was recommended to me by my cousin Chelsea, who uh, has detailed show cars, you know, million-dollar show cars uh, for my Uncle Don. And this time I'm going to be trying out uh, Clay Luber from the Chemical Brothers. No, not, not Chemical Brothers. Chemical Guys. Um, Jesus. Uh, it's, it's, it's a 90s themed uh, car show after all, so I might be playing the Chemical Brothers. Uh, but I'm going to be using this uh, Clay Luber uh, to uh, clay bar all this entire car. I can feel there's little contaminants, so I'm really looking forward to seeing the end result. And then after that... I'm going to be waxing it probably with uh, Meguiar's Ultimate Paste Wax because this is what I already have on my shelf. Uh, I have a few other things like rubbing compound and all that stuff, but uh, this car isn't that bad. So I think that just claying it and then waxing it is going to be uh, the ticket to success here. All right, well, first off, on my apologies for the audio, I do not have a proper camcorder and microphone setup, so we get iPhone audio. So I've clay barred this entire car, and I wanted to show you kind of my approach to it and how uh, I get this done. Again, I'm not a professional. Uh, you know, maybe I'm doing something wrong. If I am doing something wrong, feel free to correct me. Just don't act like a know-it-all. 
uh, and guaranteed I will respond to it. Um, so the first things first is uh, that that chemical guy's uh, bottle, the um, sprayer just broke right off. Uh, so I couldn't use it in the bottle that they gave me. So I transferred it into uh, my own glass bottle. Man. So when I clay a car, um, first uh, I have the clay and uh, I wanna always turn it to a clean side. So I, so you just, as you go, you always turn it, you'll, you'll do a section and then you'll want to turn it. You'll, you know, you'll flip it over, do the, do the next section, and then you uh, fold it over, and then you uh, just expose fresh clay every single time. That way, uh, the stuff you pick up stays in the clay and doesn't scratch the car. So first, I'm going to just spray this little section here. This is the only section I'm going to do because, um, really, I've done this entire car already. Uh, and then... So you've got the clay, it's all folded, fresh side, and then you just kind of wipe it along one side here. You don't want to do it in a circle. You don't want to go back and forth. You want to really try to keep it uh, consistent as you're pulling it because the contaminants uh, build up along the point of pressure that you're applying to the car. So if you start going around in circles, these contaminants are just going to drag along the paint. Uh, as opposed to being absorbed in the clay. That's my theory anyway. I could be wrong. You may, might be able to just swirl it around, but why take chances? This is not that big of a deal uh, to do it this way. And really, it gives me the peace of mind that I'm doing it right. So once I've cleaned up the area, like it should come along really smoothly. So first, when you first spray it, or when you first start dragging the clay along, you're gonna feel it kind of, you're gonna feel it bumpy. You're gonna feel it uh, it feels like you're kind of sanding the car and that's because you're picking up these contaminants but you're gonna spray again you know to keep it keep it freshly lubed up and then you just keep dragging it along and suddenly it's gonna be like like crystal clear it's gonna feel like you're you're on ice it's uh and it's really quite something and then once you clean it off with a the cleanest towel you you own um, and in this case, it's a brand new towel. You'll be able to feel it, and it really just, uh, I, I can't convey how smooth this is. This is amazing. Uh, so if you really like your car and you really want it to get clean, um, you know, obviously, yeah, there's the option of rubbing compound and, uh, and polish, but somewhere along the way, you're also going to want a clay bar it because, man, does it ever make your car really nice. Uh, next up is going to be uh, wax. This is the final product. So I've washed it, clay barred it, waxed it. I've uh, cleaned up the mirrors, mud flaps, bumper turn signals. I don't think this car has ever been as clean as it is now. And I fully intend to flex my four-wheel steering at the car show. Look at that. I think if I'm going to flex the four-wheel steering at the car show, I should really get some center caps for those wheels. I'm missing one, and it looks pretty bad. Just missing one. But what a car. I am going to put this in the garage under a car cover and a battery tender until the 20th because I put a lot of work into this. Look at that. And then here's the inside as the door slams into me because the door weighs a hundred pounds yeah this car came out really nice and then look at the paint Oof. Let's 
so good. Suzuka Blue looks so good on this car. All right, well, that's going to cap off this video. I am going to put this car in the garage under the car cover with a battery tender hooked up to it until the 20th because I don't want to get a speck of dirt on this car. That was a lot of work. Thank you for watching.